Hi, in this video I'm going to teach you how to get started with LaTeX. We are going to create this nice document which has a title, the author name, the date, and then it's divided in two sections. Then we have paragraphs, we have math equations, we have figures, we have also tables, list, and we are also able to format the text here. So we have bold text, italic text, and we have underlined text. I'm also going to show you how to add references to your document. If you find this video interesting, you can learn more about LaTeX by looking at my LaTeX playlist on YouTube. I have more than 30 videos on YouTube for free that you can check out and in which I explain how to compile a LaTeX document, for instance with VS Code, how to convert a markdown file into LaTeX, how to write a beautiful math equation, page numbering, cross-referencing, table, section chapters, figure, superscript, put notes, how to annotate figures, and so forth. If you want, I also have a tutorial on how to write a paper using the Elsevier template and 10 reasons why you should use LaTeX and you should switch from Word to LaTeX. This video tutorial is going to be mostly for beginners, but also if you already started using LaTeX, you might find this tutorial useful because I'm going to cover some key concepts which all of you must be familiar if you want to use LaTeX in an effective way. In this tutorial, I'm going to use Overleaf because I think it's a great tool and it's free online that you can use to simply get started with LaTeX. One of the major barriers for users to get started with LaTeX is that you have to install a LaTeX compiler on your computer because LaTeX is a compiled language, which means that you have a source file as the one that you can see here on the left and the output PDF. It's not like Word that as you type, your document gets formatted. This has some advantages and some disadvantages. One disadvantage is that you have to install a LaTeX compiler on your computer. But Overleaf fixed this problem. So you can use Overleaf online for free, completely free, to create and compile your LaTeX document, which I think is great. Before we get started, I just would like to take a second to ask you to like this video. If you're going to like what you're going to hear in this video and if you want to support this channel, you can also subscribe to my channel and press the notification bell if you want to find out more when I release new video on a similar topic. Let's get started. So in order to start with Overleaf, you can create an account for free online and then you're going to see a landing page which is going to be looking like this one. They may change it in the future. So we just have to click here on the top left, new project, and we're going to create a blank project. And we're going to call it LaTeX in five minutes. And we're going to click on create. This is going to create our project for us. So you have a main.txt file, which is your main file that your LaTeX compiler will compile. Usually it's called main.txt. In Overleaf, you can see the PDF on the right side of the screen, while your source code here on the left. Let's see how a LaTeX document is structured, because that's a key that you need to understand before you get started with LaTeX. So here at the top, from line one to six, we have our document preamble. Here we define the type of document that we want to write. For instance, in this case, we want to create a document class called article. So document class is a command that has to be always there at the beginning of your LaTeX document, but you can change article. You're not limited to have an article, but you can have a different type of document class. An example are book, report, slides, and letter. You can even have a Beamer presentation. I have a tutorial on that. Then here, after the document class article, here we are importing the packages. At the moment, we are only importing this InpoTech use package, which is going to allow us to use UTF-8. After that, again in the preamble, we can define the title, the author, and the date. Usually commands in LaTeX are a backward slash, followed by the name of the command, in this case is title, and then we have curly braces, and inside we have the text or the argument that we want to pass to that command. So to write a title, we just have to write backward slash, title, curly braces, and inside here is the title of our document. In the same way, we can also define the author. And finally, I can define the date. After the preamble, we have the begin document environment. The environment allows us to create both the document as well as special content. So we are going to see how we're going to leverage this begin command and the end command to create table, figures, and also math equations. So I'm going to explain later on how, how to do that. Inside the begin environment, we have the make title, which just prints the title, and then we are defining one section. So the begin document and the end document have always to be there. And usually your uh, text file, which is the extension of a LaTeX file, always ends with end document, while it always starts with the document class article. If later on we want to import other packages, we can just define them here. So let me copy some text here after this section. As we saw before, to create a title, we had a backward slash followed by title. To create a section is the same, is a similar approach. So we have backward slash followed by the command section, 
curly braces, and then we define here inside the curly braces what we want to appear in the name of the session, which is going to be introduction. So I'm going to copy some placeholder text. In order to see the changes reflected in your PDF, you will have to hit on recompile here. Every time you want to see the changes, you have to recompile the document. If you want to add a subsection, it's pretty straightforward. So we have a backward slash followed by subsection and then background. And inside here, we can copy some other text. In LaTeX, if you want to go into a new line, you have two ways. Either you leave an empty space between the period and the new sentence. Alternatively, if you want to be more compact, here you can add uh, uh, two backward slashes. And as you can see, even if uh, this line here is on the same line as this document and this period here, since we have added two backslashes, then this sentence here is going to be into a new line. In LaTeX, of course, you can also format the text, as you would do in Word. So for instance, that let's say that you want to add some boldface text. You can do so by using this command here, which is text bf, which stands for boldface. And again, we have curly braces. And inside here, we have the text that we want to have in bold. Similarly, if you want to add some italic text, we can use this command here, which is backward slash text it, and then followed by italic. We can also use the command underline, which is going to add an underline under our text. LaTeX is extremely powerful because it also allows you to add cross references. Let's say that we want to reference this section here. We can just add this command here, which is label. And then we have to define how we want to call and label this, this section. In this case, I'm going to call it sec uh, semicolon. And then we're going to call it intro. Later on in the document, we can use the ref command to reference that introduction section. And we can just add the ID that we have defined here at the top, here, inside the ref command. As you can see, now we can reference that section. If you add now a section before the introduction, automatically we'll update this section number here. To add a math equation, we just have to wrap the text that we want to show in the math equation with a dollar sign. A single dollar sign will show the equation in line. A double dollar sign will show us the equation in a new line. But many of you may not like this. They want to have also a numbering of the equation. However, in order to do that, we need to import a package. We are going to add this package here in the preamble at the top. This is going to allow us to write an equation and to add a numbering. Equations are usually wrapped in, in equation environment. And inside here, simply, we can just write the equation itself. We don't need to have the dollar symbol any longer. So as you can see, I've added a label, which I'm going to call it equation, semicolon, cube. And then I'm going to reference this equation in the text. I've added this text. Let me add it into a new line. And I'm saying as shown in equation. And then here we have the reference, which we have equation cube. And we are referencing this equation here. So if you're writing this line here as a continuation of this line, you may have that this equation and the relative and the respective number are breaking across the line. So one good thing to add is to add a non-breaking space. So after the equation here, we can add a tilde, which is this symbol here, which is going to be a non-breaking space. So the word equation and the number one or the respective number will always be together. If you want inside an equation, you can also add different symbol. In this case, if you want to, for instance, we are adding the pi symbol. And I also created another math tutorial on how to create equation in a very simple way. To add figures, we can use the same approach that we use to create equation. So let me create another environment, which is going to be, in this case, figure. So we're going to create the figure environment, and overleaf is quite handy. It's adding some boilerplate code for us, which otherwise you'll have to enter manually. And of course, you can modify this. So the first thing that we are adding here inside the begin figure environment is the centering, because we want to have our figure center inside the page. Then we are using include graphic command, which we are going to have to import a package at the top, and I will show you in a second. And then we are adding a caption to the figure, and automatically Overleaf is adding a label with, to our figure with the same convention that we used before. In the preamble, we have to import a new package, which is called graphpix. So I'm getting this beautiful picture from Unsplash, and I'm downloading it in my computer. I've renamed the figure to mountain, and I can go here, and I can click on upload. And this has added the mountain file to our document. Inside include graphic, we are going down to type the name of the figure. No need to specify the extension of the figure. LaTeX will figure out that for you. As you can see, now we have a problem with the figure. The figure is too big and we cannot see in our document. It's taking too much space. We can fix that by adding an option here include graphic. You usually add option by using a square braces and inside here passing the option. In this case, we want to have that the width is equal to the text width of our document. This is going to fix the figure, so now it's in the right shape, 
and is also maintaining the aspect ratio. As you can see, our figure has a caption, and then, as we did before with the reference, we could reference this ID here in the text, and we could reference our figure. Let's now add a table to our document. So in order to add a table, we can say begin, and then here we can add a table, and this is going to add a table for us. Tables are a little bit more complex in LaTeX, but basically you have the centering command, as we had before, in order to have the table center. Inside the table command, we have the tabular command, which inside here we are defining our table, and then we have a caption and a label. I'm going to add an heading and a few value. So as you can see now, I've added this heading here at the top, and then I'm adding the item, which is pasta, and the price, which is five, five dollars. Table, are, as I said, are a little bit more complicated, and please check out my video if you want to find out more, and if you want to better understand how to create table. I think the best way to create tables, if you are a Python user, is to export a Pandas data frame into a LaTeX table. I think that is great, and I have a video tutorial on that, so check on my channel. Let me add some placeholder text that I want to show you an interesting thing. Here in the document, I'm adding some placeholder text with this command here, lipsum, and then this command here. As you can see now, we have our equation, then we have our figure, and then we have our table. One thing that we can change before we move to the list is where we want this figure to be placed in the text. By default, the figure here, as you can see, is placed at the top of the page. But we can change that. If you want to, after begin figure, we can specify where we want this figure to appear. So if I say H, this figure will appear here, or LaTeX will try to put it as close as possible as where it is defined in our document. So as you can see, after our equation, we have two paragraphs written with the Lipson package, and now the figure has moved to here. We can change that behavior, and we can have it at the top by using the letter T, so the figure moves back to the top. Let me add a begin enumerate command. This will allow you to add a enumerated list in your document. As you can see here, we have a numbered list. So we have item one and item two. How we define the items in the enumerated list? Simply with this command here, backward slash item. If on the other end, you don't want to have an enumerated list, you can use the command itemize. In LaTeX, we use the percentage symbol to annotate and to write comments. So in this case, the percentage symbol and all after the percentage symbol is not shown in LaTeX. We can easily fix that, and this is a common mistake that you will get, by just putting a backward slash before special commands. So in this case, if I recompile the document, you will see that the percentage sign is going to appear. So there are several ways to add references to your document, but I think the best way, or I would encourage you to use the BibLatex package. So the first thing that we need to do is here to define a use package BibLatex. The second thing that we need to do is to create a new file here, and we can call it main.bib. The name of this file actually is not that important. The important thing is that it ends in bib. Now that we have created this main.bib file, just right after the use package biblatech, we need to import this file. So to let LaTeX know that we are going to compile our references from this main.bib file using this command, add bib resource and then curly braces, and then we have main.bib. So you can find BibTeX entry in different ways. I think this website is very nice, which is called Crossref, and it allows you to search for the title of the paper. And this is a paper that I actually wrote. You can click here on Action, and then Cite, and just copy this BibTeX entry. Another very easy way is to export the BibTeX entry directly from Mendeley. In order to cite the document, we can use a non-breaking space, and then we can do Cite. And then, as you can see, Overleaf is smart enough to tell us the key. So which key and what is this value that I'm actually adding here inside site is the key of our BibTeX entry. And the key is the first value here, which is in this case my surname underscore 2020. So the end of our document using the command print bibliography. And as you can see, we now have the reference to our paper here nicely formatted. Of course, if I add more references to our document, LaTeX will automatically keep track of all the references and update the number for us. I really hope you find this video informative and I really hope that now that you have an idea on how to use LaTeX, you will want to learn more and you will start using it for writing either your thesis, a research paper, or even a draft or a document. I think it's extremely powerful and I would highly recommend you to use it. And as you can see, it's not that complicated. If you find this video informative, please consider liking the video and subscribing to my channel. It really helps me a lot. If you want to support this channel and you like this type of videos, please consider buying me a coffee or supporting me on Patreon or joining here my YouTube channel. 
this will help me and in future i will be able to release more video like this one thank you very much for listening and see you in the next video